Thank you very much. Yes, so I'm going to be talking about what's wrong with Git. And this is joint work with Daniel Jackson. All right. So Git, according to its website, is a distributed version control system that is easy to learn, it's performant, and um, has features like cheap local branching, convenient staging areas, and support for multiple workflows. Now, none of these claims have been disputed, but one that is easy to learn. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show you some results from surveys conducted by other researchers and by the Git community that dispute this easy to learn claim. For example, the authors of this paper conducted a, a study in which they interviewed engineers at Google and Autodesk to study the effect of, of hidden dependencies on the user experience of version control. And, um, and the term here, the hidden dependency, comes from uh, uh, the cognitive dimensions framework. Maybe that rings a bell to you. But anyways, they observed a number of patterns in the, in, the, um, in the usage of Git. And here are two of them, which I found quite interesting. So first, they found that users were risk averse when using Git to the point um, that users avoided using alternative commands that would better suit the task they were trying to perform due to uncertainty of the consequences of running a new command. Now, um, if you're a fan of Git, you probably find this baffling, right? How could they be uncertain of the consequences of running a Git command, right? So let me show you, for example, um, <laughs> the documentation for Git Rebase, okay? Forward port local commits to the updated upstream head. Wonderful, all right? <laughs> what else could, is there to say? OK. Let me show you another command that is very clear what can be used for. OK, maybe you used this one before. Git wave stash, wave all stage stashes next to various cherry pick non applied applied trees. <laughs> Never used that one? OK. Or this one? Get distinguished tree, distinguish a few non-clean remote trees inside various rev listed upstreams. This is my favorite. And this one is very useful if you're working with sub modules. Okay? Git control stash, control some non-bundled stage stashes over any shown sub modules. All right. So you may have realized by now that I've been tricking you and that the last three, com three uh, commands were fake. Okay? <laughs> And, and maybe, if you're a Git expert, then rebase, then rebase makes sense to you. Let me try again. Then Git, re then Git rebase makes sense to you, but to most users, it makes as much sense as Git control stash. Now, going back to the observations from that study, the other thing they found is that repair operations are expensive to the point that several of the team report having to perform repeated local repairs by recloning the entire repo, okay? And this is beautifully captured uh, by, this, by this XKCD comic. <laughs> and you know that there's this saying that there's always some truth in a, in a joke. Uh, All right. So there's also evidence that Git is not easy to learn in surveys conducted by the Git community. For example, uh, this question is from the 2012 Git user survey, and the question is, what do you hate about Git? And if you look through the, through the responses, you'll find things such as the fact that it's too complex for many users, that it requires a steep learning curve for, newbie, for newbies, that it has dark corners, and so on. Here's another question. This one is from the 2011 Git user survey. And the question is, which of the following features would you like to see implemented in Git? And the third most voted option is this adding a dash n flag for each command, which would describe what would happen if you were to actually execute that command. Okay, Kind of like doing a dry run of the command. So all of this led us to believe that there's something interesting going on here worth uh, investigating. And uh, if, if we could understand what's wrong with Git, we might be able to extract larger lessons about software design in the process. 
All right. So I'm going to show you three examples of problems encountered by Git users. And uh, these are related to switching branches, the detached head state, and, and tracking or ignoring a tracked file in Git. Let's talk about branching in Git. Branching is a difficult thing to understand in Git. But fortunately for us, a Git user came up with this uh, way of thinking about Git that might help us understand branches. <laughs> Okay, and, and it apparently all makes sense if you think of branches as n-dimensional membranes mapping the spatial locky of successive commits onto the projected manifold of each clone repo. All right. So maybe this explanation of, of branches makes sense to some of you, but for the rest, I'm going to give an alternate explanation of how branching works which is explanation you can uh, find in popular Git references or books. All right. A branch in Git is a pointer to a commit. So in this example repo, we have three commits and one master branch pointing to commit two. You could create a new branch uh, develop that points to the same commit. And now if you, switch, if you switch to that branch and make a new commit, commit th uh, three, then this new commit belongs to branch develop only. Great. OK. So now here's a problem with uh, switching branches, as exemplified by this stack overflow question. And basically, what's going on here is that uh, the user wants to switch, but uncommitted changes in the working directory or staging area prevent the user from doing so. So what could you do in this situation? Well, you can create a new commit, um, but, it, it, but, but this wouldn't represent a logical group of changes, because you are in the middle of some work. So if you actually care about uh, having a tidy history, you would then have to uh, amend uh, this, bo this bogus commit afterwards. You could stash, uh, and that works in most cases. But if you're shuffling between multiple tasks, it gets hard to remember uh, the stash that corresponds to the branch you want to switch to. And even so, that doesn't work in the middle of a merge. Now let's move on to the second, uh, to the second problem, detached head. Git has a head, which is a reference that keeps track of the current commit. And it usually points to a commit through a branch. So for example, in this case, we have head that points to commit to through master. I can switch to develop, and then head now points to develop. And if I make a new commit, then uh, the develop uh, pointer gets updated, and, and, uh, and everything works as you expect. Now, the interesting thing is that in Git, um, you, can, you can detach head and make it point to a commit directly. and um, and we said this is in a, in a detached head state because head is pointing to a commit directly instead of doing so through a branch. And now, if you make a commit in, 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 in this state, this new commit doesn't belong to, to any branch at all. It's kind of like uh, you know, flying there in a, in a parallel universe that's unreachable from any branch. And this confuses novices that usually get in a detached head uh, state accidentally. For example, in this case, uh, the, the author tried something which didn't work, and now he's in a detached head state and has no idea what to do. And the detached head state not only confuses Git users, um, but also military officials which are training Git. <laughs> At least there's a silver lining to all this complexity. All right, so the last problem I want to tell you about is related to untracking or ignoring a tracked file in Git. And it's exemplified by this Stack Overflow question. So how do you stop tracking a, tra uh, tracking a tracked file in Git? Well, you can try uh, using uh, the git ignore file. But that doesn't work uh, if the file is already committed in the repo. And um, the solution to this, problem, to this problem, or at least one of the potential solutions, is to use the assume and change marking. But that means you need to learn a whole other set of commands to deal with these kind of files. And many wonder how to list these kind of files or how to undo the marking. But you know, in general, uh, undoing things in Git is easy, right? <laughs> and, and worst case scenario, you can always use Google to figure out what to do, right?
All right. So to determine how closely these problems I talked about and some others that we identified match the, the problems that users experience in practice, we performed a manual analysis of Stack Overflow posts. We started by finding all questions tagged with a keyword git that had more than 30 upvotes, and then we examined by hand to see if, uh, if, um, if the author of the question was experiencing the misfit. And for example, uh, for switching branches, we found three questions with more than 500,000 views. For detached head, seven questions with more than 1.1 million views. And on tracking file, 15 questions with uh, over 1.5 million views. So this suggests that these are real problems kit users face. So let's try what, to understand what's going on here. And I'll give you a quick overview of the theory of, the, of design we apply in this work. A key aspect of the theory is the notion of a concept that is something you need to understand to use an application, and also something that a developer needs to understand to work effectively with its code. So take Twitter, for example. The notion of a user in a tweet would be concept, while something uh, um, like a class, assuming that they're using some object-oriented language, uh, would not be a concept since a user of, of Twitter doesn't need to be concerned with that at all. And But on the other hand, though, uh, in the case of Python, then a class and module would be concepts. A concept has a motivating purpose. And um, for example, for the, the motivating purpose of the, of, the, of the trash in your house is to serve as a staging area for trash. You don't want every time to, that, that you need to throw something away to kind of have to go out and throw it away in the beans outside, right? So you just put it on the bean in your home, and then you take it out when it fills up. Um, the tr on the other hand, the trash can in, 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 in your OS, the, its motivating purpose is to allow deletions to be undone. So as if you delete a file by mistake, you can recover it easily. An operational principle illustrates how the concept fulfills its motivating purpose. So for example, for the trash can in Mac OS, an operational principle would be something like this. When a file or folder is deleted, it is not removed permanently but it is instead saved in a special um, trash folder from which it can be restored until the trash is emptied. A misfit is a scenario where the concept fails to fulfill its motivating purpose. So, uh, for example, again, for the trash can in Mac OS, a misfit, uh, one misfit is the following. If you delete a file by mistake and you cannot remember the file's name, then there is no easy way to restore the file. To find, there's no easy way to, f to find the file, which means it may not be possible to restore it. Now, um, an operational misfit by, might be remedied by a small change uh, in the concept. And actually, in this case, they, they fixed this misfit in, in, in recent version of Mac OS by just adding a, a, a I think, date added or something like that in the, in the sort of meta metadata. But, um, but misfits might, might, might um, represent some, some deeper problem that is not easily fixed. And ideally, we'd like to identify these misfits as early as possible. And, um, and for that, we have a criteria for concept design. And an arrow here means that uh, that's the motivating purpose of the concept. All right, so let's apply the theory um, to Git to provide an explanation of what's going on. So the first step is to uh, establish a set of key purposes for version control. And the, the, and, and the goal here is to establish a kind of benchmark um, um, for a generic version control system against which uh, uh, we can later evaluate Git. So let's go back to, to our misfits and use the, the theory to explain what's going wrong. So the misfit switching branches is, um, is caused by the, the, by the violation of the decoupling criterion by the working directory, staging area and branch. And, um, and, and basically what's going on is that the working directory and staging area are interfering with the fulfillment of, of, of the motivating purpose of a branch that is to support parallel development. Um, so these are sub-purposes. That's a, the, the parent purpose. Now consider stashing. The uh, motivating purpose for stashing is to clean up and save uncommitted changes. But um, we, we actually tried to map this purpose to one of the high-level uh, high, high purposes for version control, 
uh, but it's actually quite hard to do. And we believe the reason for this is um, because inclusion of stash results from other decisions uh, in Git's design, such as how branching works, um, rather than intrinsic, uh, and not from the intrinsic complexity of version control. For detached head, uh, we have again a coupling problem because um, a head, but by being able to, 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 to detach head and make it point to a commit directly, we, uh, we are creating a new line of development which is hard to switch back and from to. So that's why it's interfering with a, with a, with a purpose of a branch, with the motivating purpose of a branch that is to support parallel development. For untracking file, the problem is that assumed and change and ignored files violate the non-division criteria. The same purpose, prevent committing files, motivates both ignore and assume and change. And this means that the user needs to learn a whole other a set of commands to, to, to do the same thing that the ignore mechanism already provides. All right, good. How am I doing with time? Four minutes, great. Okay. So, uh, okay, so we have an analysis of Git, and Gitless is our attempt to fix the misfits we identified by reworking uh, Git's concept model. So it's built on top of Git and presents a different concept model. And uh, it's, an, it's an experiment, so we do not claim that uh, Gitless occupies an ideal point in the concept design space. There are actually different ways in which you can fix the misfits. But I'll show you, what we, um, um, but I'll show you how we fix them in Gitless. So let's talk about branching. So in Gitless, a branch is a completely independent line of development. And each, bran each branch includes the working version of files. So that means that uh, when you switch to another branch, we'll say what around community changes you have, and when you switch back, we'll resurface them. And a branch not only saves um, the uncommitted state, but it also saves uh, uh, information, for example, if you're in the middle of a merge or something like that, which means that if you're in the middle of uh, solving conflicts, you can switch to another branch and do some other unrelated tasks and then switch back to the original branch to finish fixing conflicts. We also remove the staging area, so stage contents cannot prevent switching branches and there's a single path between working and, and, and committed versions. And to account for common use cases of staging in Git, uh, such as how to split, uh, such as splitting a large change into multiple commits and so on. Uh, we have a flexible commit command that has flags for the common use cases. And our concept of branch uh, eliminates the need for, for, for stashing, a uh, concept that is not present in Gitless. And for detached head, uh, in Gitless there is no possible, possible way to get uh, in a detached head state, each uh, branch has a head. And regarding untracking files, in Gitless, uh, committed files can be ignored or untracked, and actually in files, Gitless can only be tracked, untracked, ignored, and in conflict, and, and they can move between them, between those classifications freely. So we wanted to see uh, what was the effect of these changes. So we conducted a, a, a user study, and each participant did one session using Git, and the other one using Gitless. And they all uh, were Git users, and they've never used Gitless before. So this is a screenshot of how the fragment setup looked like. Uh, they had a bunch of li slides and they just went through them and completed the tasks in order. So one of the things we, me we measured is task completion times. And, and you can see task one on the uh, top left corner and task uh, six over here. And the, f uh, the first thing to note is that with the exception of the last tasks, the, the last task, there was more variance in the, in the task completion time for Git. Um, and this is perhaps because of the, of the fact that they, had, that they came in with different proficiency levels, right? Uh, one in Gitless, none of them have used it before, so they all spent a similar amount of time completing the tasks. Also, most participants completed tasks three, four, and five faster when using Gitless than when using Git. And in all of these tasks, having truly independent lines of development proved useful. After each session, we asked participants to complete a short questionnaire about their experience using Git or Gitless to complete uh, the tasks. And overall, participants found Gitless more satisfying than Git and less frustrated. But there's no big difference in efficiency, difficulty, and, and confusion. And this might be to the f due to the fact that all, all of the participants had uh, used Git before but were encountering Gitless for the first time. And actually, when you break down the results by uh, Git proficiency, um, you see that, that, um, that novices especially elected, you know, and, but when you, 
uh, consider the express, the parse flip, and which is what you expect since they came in um, already knowing it. But despite that, there's no big difference in satisfaction and frustration. Uh, so even though they were encountering GitLess for the first time, uh, they found it almost as satisfying as, as Git. That is a tool they've been using for a long time. At the end of the second session, we asked them to, um, to complete an additional final questionnaire comparing GitLess with Git. And um, overall, the, they, 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 they enjoyed GitLess and they found it easier to learn and use. But when asked if they, if they would continue using GitLess, the results are somewhat split. And some show concern about its power, which is uh, not surprising since Git has been in use for uh, like 10 years or so, and GitLess is, is, is fairly new. And uh, again, when you break it down by Git proficiency, you see that Git novices especially liked it. And while novices uh, really liked it, experts didn't find it much worse than Git. Um, the reactions are pretty neutral. But they said they wouldn't continue using GitLess if they could. But again, they already know all of, Git, all, all, all of how Git works, so why would they switch anyway? All right, good. So um, I've shown you how we can use the theory of concept design to redesign Git. Um, but of course, the same approach could be applied to other version control systems and other uh, software in general, including our, um, including our programming languages and tools. All right, thank you very much. And try GitLess if you haven't done so already. <laughs>